Congratulations, Lance Lyle. You're the winner of the BattleBot sweepstakes. Um, we're going to be building you, it looks like, the Mutant J design is what you put. So uh, let's get busy. Here is your weapon of choice. We're pushing our jaws with uh, a 1,000 pound rated linear ball screw actuator by Motion Systems. We've made the frame. You've seen us build that. Um, I've now welded, finished welded it. We got the gussets on the frame. We've actually threaded those with quarter 20s. We got a ball caster for our front wheels. And we have uh, added some gussets here for connecting the two systems with isolator bushings. And then we've also added some more gussets for uh, more isolator bushings to mount the uh, 1 8 inch 4130 chromoly armor. Motors are mounted. Um, we're ready to start assembly. Putting some armor on. I like to make the armor panels a good old fashioned way. When you weld the frame, there's a lot of imperfections, so uh, you almost have to do it this way. I just go ahead and take a piece of paper, lay it up here the way I like it, pencil it out, punch holes for where the holes are, and voila, it's an armor panel. So uh, this is 6061 uh, aluminum. Doesn't that look nice? Now we're getting to the point where we're going to put the thing together. We got one chromoly rod, which is our main spar. And then the second spar, which keeps the two halves completely level for this design, um, actually goes through the jaws and actually helps pivot them. So uh, that will actually go in place like that. But before we move on, we also have these two pieces that were, I had machined uh, by my buddies at Cincinnati Machine. They, uh, this is, hardened uh, 6160 uh, plate. These uh, I call frame blades. These are going to make up a wedge-shaped design that goes on the back of the robot and also helps protect the front of the jaws in some of the vulnerable areas. These are going to go on both sides of the jaws, and if everything works out, if the robot flips upside down, they'll actually articulate and go the other direction and perform a wedge uh, shape as well. I am threading the isolator bushings together. These will be the access panel in and out of the robot. The idea is to take this really rigid piece of metal, mount it with these so it absorbs some impact. All right, we did the exterior. Now it's time for the guts of the robot. We have uh, some silicone jacketed eight gauge wire. This is gonna be perfect for the power. We're gonna crimp and solder all of our connectors. We're gonna be using uh, Thor's controllers made by IFI. These go hand in hand with their uh, Isaac 16 system. This is what we're gonna be using to plug in our batteries. Uh, these are only two of uh, uh, the four uh, battery packs. These are wired in series um, at 24 volts. This is actually going to power the whole robot. Each one of these plugs are for the individual power packs to plug in. So uh, let's install. We got the wires ready to roll. Let's just double check to make sure that the jaws are going to work fast enough. Looks pretty good to me. This is not your typical RC system where you go in and you reverse your servos. It's done here uh, uh, in, in basic code. This is the basis which most microchips actually communicate in. So uh, it's a very good thing to learn, and you can set variables. Um, so what we're going to do is we're now going to dump that into this system. And what's great is this robot will remember this, and I can use the same controller for all my robots. The system's programmed and ready to go on the robot. Let's go put it in. All right, we got all the electronics in. We're going to turn it on for the first time. So this is where fires happen, so make sure your fire extinguisher is handy. It's alive. That's our main weapon. We're going to cram that underneath the other robots, lift them up. And this robot's going to use the arena to its advantage. All right, there we go. It's moving. So, uh, next phase, clean it up, get the armor on it. Okay, we've done a lot today. Um, 